In this video we have a set w. This is the set of all functions such that f of negative x is equal to negative f of x. So this is the set of all odd functions. And we're asked to prove that this is actually a subspace of all functions from the real numbers into the real numbers. So this guy here is a vector space over the real numbers. Over here on the right, I went ahead and wrote down what it means for W to be a subspace of V. So we have three conditions, and all we have to do to prove this is carefully satisfy uh, these three conditions. The first condition is that W is not empty. The second is that given any two vectors, the sum is also in W. And this is called closure under vector addition. And the third condition uh, is called closure under scalar multiplication. And it basically says that given a vector x and w and a scalar c, in this case our field is the real numbers, that the scalar product c times the vector x is also in w. So before we start the proof, also let me show you how you add vectors in this, in this vector space. So given f and g in this vector space v, the sum is f plus g, that's the sum of the vectors, and it's f plus g of x, and that's defined as f of x plus g of x for all x and r. And likewise, uh, if you take a scalar times f, this is defined to be c times f of x, and again for all x and r. So let's go ahead and carefully go through the proof. So first we have to show that uh, w is not empty. So we have to show it's not empty. So there is a function that is odd that is in W. That's the zero function. So note, or the zero vector, I'm going to call it that. Put a little hat on it. <laughs> this guy, given by, let's see, zero of x, we're going to say that's equal to zero for all x and r. Right? Uh, the claim is that this is odd. Since, and let's check, if we take 0 of minus x, well, what does the 0 function do? It just sends it to 0. And if we take the 0 of x, well, what does it do to x? It just sends it to 0. So this 0 vector, it's actually a vector, but it's a function, <laughs> uh, is this. So this is true for all x and r. And so this guy is certainly an odd function, so it is inside w. So the, the zero vector is a function, it's the zero function. So that takes care of condition one, we've shown it's non-empty. Now we have to show that the sum of any two vectors in w is also a vector in w. So take any, take any fg in w then what does that mean? That means that f of x, f of negative x, is equal to negative f of x, and g of negative x is equal to negative g of x, and both of these conditions hold for all x in R. And now we have to look at the sum. So then f plus g, we have to show that f plus g is in w. Well, what does it mean for f plus g to be in w? It means it's an odd function. So we have to check that it's odd. So f plus g of minus x, well, by definition of the addition, this is f of negative x plus g of negative x. And now we can use the fact that both f and g are odd. So f of negative x is negative f of x. So this is negative f of x. And then here, this is going to be negative g of x. I'm going to skip a step and write it like this. Then you can factor out a negative sign. So this is negative, I'll use a bracket, f of x plus g of x. Right? But this is equal to negative f plus g of x, by definition of the addition of functions. So we have f plus g of negative x equal to negative f plus g of x. That means that f plus g is an odd function, so f plus g, oh, and this is true for all x and r. So this means f plus g is an odd function, so f plus g 
is in fact in W. So this shows that W is closed under vector addition. So to recap, to do this step, you start by taking any two vectors. In this case, the vectors are actually functions. And then you just write down what that means. What does it mean for F to be in W? It means this is true for all X and R. I can squeeze it in here. And what does it mean for G to be in W? It means this is true for all X and R. Then you have to show that F plus G is in W. Well, what does that mean? That means F plus G is an odd function. So you just write down F plus G and you look at what happens when you plug in negative X. And you gotta be really careful here, right? And we showed that F plus G of negative X is equal to negative F plus G of X. So that means that F plus G is in W of three. We have to show it's closed under scalar multiplication. So take any F and W and C in the real numbers. Okay. Then what does this mean? This means that F of negative X is equal to negative F of X for all X and R. Then we have to show that uh, CF is in W, right? So we have to look at CF of X, of negative X. So what does this mean? Well, this is C times F of negative X by definition of scalar multiplication. And so this is C times negative F of X because F is odd. And then we can factor out the negative. So we get negative C times F of X. And I'll put this in brackets. And so this is negative, and what is this in brackets? This is CF of X. So we have CF of negative X equal to negative CF of X. So that means that the vector CF is in W. So W is closed under scalar multiplication. So all three conditions are satisfied. So W is a subspace of V. Kind of rushed that, but I um, hope it makes sense. I think the hardest part is just this, this notation here, right? This notation. Keep in mind, you really have to know this. F plus G of X, that's defined to be F of X plus G of X, and then CF of X, that's the scalar product, that's C times F of X. So you really have to use these uh, carefully in the proof.